I, on the woodpecker today, am making this lighthouse as a Christmas gift for René. I live in a small town on the shore of the St. Lawrence River. On its tip, there's an old abandoned lighthouse. It was my inspiration for the gift I gave René last Christmas. But since it's now December 21st, it's too late to design my own intarsia pattern. So I'll be using one from one of my intarsia book. It will be simpler and faster this way. One of my wood species will be Douglas fir. So I start by cutting a leftover strip from one of my braces, scrap pieces. I couldn't use my table saw to cut it because at that time it was still in pieces. When I have all the wood I need, I pass some of them in the thickness planer. I start with the actual lighthouse. So I get the scroll saw and begin to cut. The first piece on the pattern. More to cut. The patterns are glued on the pieces of wood just before I cut them. When I have all the pieces for the lighthouse, I glue them together. Then I continue to cut some wood. It's starting to take shape, but I have one small problem. My printer broke down. What lousy timing. So I trace the missing pieces directly from my master pattern. Then I can continue to cut. On the original piece, the sky is thinner than the rest. So I plane the sky thinner. and continue to cut. Now that all the pieces are cut, I can remove the paper and place them in their place on the master pattern. And this is what the pieces look like without the paper. <laughs> Not bad. Now I can begin to shake the pieces, starting with the light ups. After a piece is rounded, I place it back in its place and continue with the next one. Then a small accident happens. Rather than cutting a brand new piece, I just glue it with instant glue. It's less trouble that way. Mm, the hills should be thinner than the lighthouse, but thicker than the sky. So I send them to size. When I'm happy with their thickness, I shape their edges. The top part is shaped. I need to shape the ground. There it is. All finished now. I'm happy with the look. Next, I must trace the shape of the lighthouse's windows and drill a hole in them. Then, 
Then I pass the scroll saw blade in the hole and cut them. Next, each piece is sanded with a finer grit. When the fine sanding is done, all the pieces that fit well together are glued in blocks. I manage to glue seven blocks of pieces. When the glue is dry, I try to glue the blocks together. When they don't fit, I sand them until they fit perfectly. Then I can glue all the bottom pieces together and the top as a separate glue up. But to glue the top, I must tape it and put sandbags on top. When the glue is dry, I can try both sections together. Since it's not perfect, I sand the lighthouse. Now that it's perfect, I can glue both sections together. While the glue dries, I stick the frame pattern on the piece of walnut and cut the pieces. I only do the concave cut and I start working on the backing of the piece. Before spreading the glue on the backing, I trace the outline. Then I spread the glue inside the line. And I lay my masterpiece on it. To apply pressure on it, I place a sheet of parchment paper between the pieces and the sandbags. Then I continue to work the frame. When I think the glue is dry, I check the frame. Mm, it's less than perfect. But before I do anything else, I cut the excess plywood. And it's then that I realize the glue was not dry enough. So I add some, put weight on it, and I wait until the glue is completely dry this time. When it's really dry, I sand the plywood flush. But it doesn't help the frame. I need to resand everything to make it smaller. Almost there. When the scenery is at the right size, I can work on the frame. Now that I'm satisfied with the fit, I round over the edge of the piece. The frames receive the shaping too. Now I can glue everything together. It's held in place with bench dogs and a clamp in the center. Until now, I haven't cut any pieces for the doors and windows. It's the ideal time to cut some from a piece of ebony. Now I can glue all those small pieces. When the glue is dry, I resand all the exterior of the frame.
I thought the frame was perfect, but from the back, I can clearly see it's not the case. So I fill the gap with epoxy. The stick is like modeling Play-Doh, and when it's ready, it gets hot. That's when I push it inside the gap. The next morning, I just sand it flush. After a last hand sanding, I can spray the first coat of lacquer. When the lacquer is dry, I spread the surface with a soft abrasive pad. That's when I noticed a glue drop. I just remove it with sandpaper and spray the second coat. That's the finished piece after three coats. And when the lacquer is dry, I can screw the back hook. And finally sign it. Wow. Wow. And here's Renee's reaction when she unwrapped it. And if you think that's a nice present, just look at what Renee gave me. It's now time to remove our shaving teddy bear and replace it with Renee's Christmas gift. This is what I made for Renee last Christmas. Thank you and see you soon on The Woodpecker!